Alex Salmond established the Scottish National Party as the party of government in Scotland. He was the figurehead of the independence movement, so nearly turning that dream into reality in 2014. But now he says he's worried that his successor as Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, is literally throwing that dream away. Have a listen. 30 years of gradually building, 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 building till we get independence over 50% and then throw it away in some self-indulgent nonsense. Which even if it was right, which it isn't, would hardly be tactically the most astute manoeuvre when you're meant to be taking Scotland to its next date with destiny. Former First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmond, joins me now. Alex, lovely to see you. Uh, thanks for here. coming on Jeremy Carr Live. There is so much that I want to talk to you about. And, of course, the whole gender thing and Nicola Sturgeon is a, is a very dangerous subject, but I do want to go there. Um, let's ask the obvious question to you. Have her gender policies made Scottish independence, the dream that you fought so long for, less likely? Well, I, I'm concerned, basically because the gender recognition bill that's gone through the Scottish Parliament has turned into a constitutional battle with Westminster. Now, firstly, I don't think an issue as sensitive as this should become a constitutional battle. Uh, but secondly, if you're going to have a, a constitutional battle with Westminster, I mean, you know, have it on fuel poverty in Scotland or Europe. Uh, you know, don't have it on something where the vast majority of the Scottish public have grave doubts about the direction of the Scottish Government. It's almost like she's created a hill on which your dream could die, and that must rankle, right? Yes, and what I'm saying is get off that hill and let's get onto the, the high ground. I mean, let's, let's go onto the ground of self-determination rather than self-identification. I mean, that interview the other day, I mean, she, she was caged. She didn't know which way to turn. Several figures in the SNP, including her, can't say whether a transgender rapist, Isla Bryce and Adam Graham, we know the story, everybody, is a woman or not. Mm -hmm. Can you, Alex? Well, Isla Bryson, the evidence would suggest, is a man pretending to be a woman so she can not go to a male prison and get into a female prison. And the fact that, you know, somebody is as eloquent as Nicola Sturgeon is, is reduced to incoherence and not being able to say that should tell you that, that there's something wrong with the legislation, <laughs> that this has not been thought through effectively enough, particularly on an issue uh, as difficult as this. Now, look... We're now in a situation where the Scottish press are actively looking for any transgender person who's involved in criminality, mm -hmm. which is desperately bad for the transgender community because the last thing you want is to be uh, associated with, uh, with criminality. It's a very, very important issue, but it's been hijacked again. And I think so much of what we see nowadays, you know, movements are hijacked, genuine movements are hijacked by people. Th this whole political nightmare for Nicola Sturgeon is, 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 is the same. I mean, I, I heard Piers the other night say about Sir Keir Starmer. Um, Rishi Sunak's di dictionary definition of a woman is an adult human female. Keir Starmer still can't say that. So I ask you, you're a political figurehead, what is a woman? It's an adult human female, in my opinion. So, the, so but again, it shows that if you, you get to a stage where... I mean, Keir Starmer is also a very effective politician, like Nicola Sturgeon, but you, if, you, if a politician can't explain an issue such as that, there is something wrong with the, the stance, as you put it, the, the hill on which they've chosen to die. In the case of this act, there was a judgment in the Scottish courts in December uh, where Lady Haldane said, look, if you get a gender recognition certificate, then for legal purposes, all legal purposes, you change your sex. Yeah. Now, that position, if you say you can do it in three months with nothing else to check, is incompatible with the women's rights in terms of single-sex spaces across a range of medical examinations and toilets and a variety of other spaces where women have won the right over many, many years of campaigning to have a protected single-sex space. Now, this is you cannot point. have the two things coexisting. And, you, and as soon as that judgment came down in the Scottish courts, the Scottish government should have said, wait a minute, let's have another think about this, or accepted, incidentally, some of the amendments that came in from nine SNP rebels, which would have solved the uh, Isla Bryson case by saying, look, if you're facing sexual charges, you cannot have a gender recognition system. I thought what was interesting about Isla Bryson slash Adam Graham's story was that his wife came out and said, which is very powerful, I believe that he's using transition, as you said, 
as an excuse to go to a female jail. And, and I, I remember saying on the show last week, Alex, this person raped two women, mm. two innocent victims. And it says nothing, I think, of our society, be it in Scotland or the United Kingdom, that we're too scared to talk about things like this for fear of upsetting people. Genuine transgender, absolutely, people need understanding and they need, they need care and they need consideration. But when somebody hijacks something like that for the right... I don't understand. I'm not a politician. You are. <clears throat> I don't understand why Starmer or Sturgeon wouldn't just come out and say... They're so terrified. I think this is what the electorate would say, and I'd love your answers. I think they're so terrified of alienating anybody and anything that they steer this middle course, and in the end, they get themselves tied in knots. Mm. So, therefore, you shouldn't pass legislation yeah. which is vulnerable to bad actors, let's yeah. call them that, yeah. like, like Isla Bryson. Now, what, what happens now? <laughs> What's the reason? I mean, uh, I made a speech at Burn Supper. I mean, I should do this more often. <laughs> it's far, far, more, far more effective than putting out press releases or things. What do you do now? Well, get off this hill. Mm. Uh, come to a compromise. Uh, accept the Secretary of State for Scotland says he wants talks. Have talks. Try and reconcile the Equalities Act and the rights of women on the one hand with uh, the hopes for transgender people on the other, or accept the amendments that were voted down in the Scottish yeah. Parliament from your own backbenchers. Try and get... Take the heat out of the controversy. Listen, I, I'm not frightened of confrontation on Westminster. No. I just think we should have confrontation on Europe, or on fuel... Po I, I can't... And for you, the man, as I said in the intro, that was the figurehead of the nationalistic movement, it must cut you to the, to, to, the, to the bone, really, to think that so much of what you believe in and so much of what you've aimed for all of your political life is being lost in an argument on something that's, that has, yes, been hijacked. I, I'm surprised... Actually, I'm not surprised, because I got slagged off for calling her that horrible woman up north. Your, your lady said to me earlier, well, you, you said that. Well, you I, should, well, you, but I think she, you were, No, you but I think off. that she is literally... Uh, sabotage something that I know a lot of Scots. I mean, what does it say that the majority of Scots support a Tory government blocking the SNP's gender law made in the Scottish Parliament, including a third of independent supporters? How does that make you, Alex Salmon, feel? Well, it makes me concerned that that's the area. Now, listen, I, I was in Aberdeen on Saturday and I was I canvassed the house where a lady came to the door on Saturday afternoon wearing her coat, not because she was about to go out, because the house was so mm. cold mm. that she can't afford to yep. keep her heating on. Now, if you said to that lady, look, the Scottish Parliament, we want independence because this is a land of energy plenty and we want people to afford electricity. I mean, electricity should be as cheap as chips in Absolutely. Scotland, given our energy power. You'd get absolute support for that lady who would say, yes, the Scottish Parliament should have the power to do that. If you said to look, uh, but we're having a fight with Westminster on transgender legislation and she probably thinks you're wrong, then you're on an absolute loser. So get on to the high ground. Are you surprised? Uh, I know you've never criticised her. Are you surprised at the gaps within the SNP increasingly obvious about Sturgeon's leadership? Are you surprised that she slipped up so... Well, massively she slipped up, hasn't she? Well, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. And uh, the, the key, of course, is to get off the mistakes as quickly as possible. And that's it. But I'm not sure that Nicola Sturgeon wants my advice, but... But there that, weren't divisions like this under your leadership. Well, the SNP was noted for its discipline, but what people didn't understand is that was self-discipline. The, the discipline came about because people had their eyes on the prize of independence. Mm -hmm. Now, what you've got to do, and it tells you something when you've got nine SNP rebels in the Scottish Parliament who've been pleading uh, to get some of these uh, amendments carried. Uh, so the way to get the discipline back is to get the eyes back on the prize and get onto the, the high ground of self-determination. Your party, Alba, um, are you actively trying to entice uh, SNP MPs and SNPs to, to defect? Do you think this is the moment where Alex Salmon, the man who was the figurehead, we said, of that nationalistic movement, can, can grasp the nettle and, and start again? Well, well, Alba's a fledgling party. I mean, obviously, Alba's sights are on the Scottish elections in four years' time. But do you see this time. as a battleground that will give you, uh, you no, know, m momentum? No, what we see, I mean, on Saturday at uh, the Alba National Council, we're saying, look... There's going to be, they've been denied a referendum. We should pressurise much harder for that than we've been doing. But if it's going to be an election taking the place of a referendum, then let it be this year in the Scottish Parliament by forcing an election on October the 19th. That was the date that Nicola Sturgeon promised for the referendum. And have that as a poll on the home ground of the Scottish Parliament 
as opposed to playing away in Westminster next year, where it would be much more difficult to focus a Westminster election on the issue of Scottish independence, whereas a Scottish election, you could focus on the issue of independence. So how does ALPA get support? ALPA gets support by putting forward ideas and saying the constitutional question, independence should be the priority, and this is the way we could get a, a chance to have a, another vote for, for I get, independence. I get that, Alex, but my, my question, and I know politicians skirt, and I appreciate you being here, right? This gaff has, as, as we've sort of discussed, cast a massive shadow over the movement that your life has been built around. It must, in your mind, be a moment to grasp the nettle, because many people believe that Nicola Sturgeon has been found out. Well, I think you saw in that clip <laughs> was, uh, some of my uh, frustration. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, uh, and therefore, but, you know, what's the job of Alapa? The job of Alapa is to say, look, instead of doing what you're doing, do this instead. Not because, look, I've, I've no longer got responsibility for the SNP, but the, the national movement, independence for Scotland, <laughs> that is what I care about, what I've always cared about. So Alapa, if Alapa is going to grow, then we have to bring forward the ideas and try and say this is the ground on which we should be pitching this argument. I, I'm, I'm not a, a Scotsman, <laughs> I'm not a, a, a nationalist Scots, but I, from afar, would look at Nicola Sturgeon as somebody who has done everything that she possibly can to achieve something, even against criticism and, and, and negativity, and I think she's blown it. And I, and I know this is a difficult question for you to answer. What do you think of her as the First Minister? Well, she's been an extraordinarily capable politician, uh, but this is a, a serious misstep. Uh, now, it's not irredeemable just now. If you get off this ground onto the high ground, as I've explained, then in a few weeks' time, people have forgotten about this. But if you do as Nicola says she's going to do and say we're going to have a court battle over this issue, then all you'll do is have a full months, perhaps years, on this issue. Which and is why Alba uh, and your party and you can seize this moment. Well, we're going to get on to the issues that matter to the people of Scotland and articulate them in a positive way. The other thing about independence, Jeremy, one of the reasons the SNP grew so much and we took the independence argument so far is that we appealed across society and no-one in Scottish society felt threatened in any mm. way by the constitutional progress that was being made. Now you've got a situation where the many people in the women's movement in Scotland say, wait a minute, I have to get the protection of Westminster against my own parliament. That you must not have. And you must <clears throat> open the vision of an independent Scotland that's saying we want everyone's contribution. We're all part of this process. Alex, delighted to see you. I think she's blown it, but lovely to have you on JK Live. Thank you so much indeed.